Let us pray. Father, it is well with our souls because of what you've done for us. We praise you for giving us all that we need to live lives that are pleasing to you. We thank you that you have given us this guide, your word, to teach us what we need to know and to inspire us to live for you every day. We pray now that you will guide us through your word this morning. Speak to our hearts and minds and souls and prepare us for the week that is ahead in service to you. And I pray that my words would be your words as we seek to learn and grow together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our message today on the Romans Road to Heaven is for both new believers and for those of us who have known the Lord for a long time. You see, both groups, the new believers and the not-so-new believers, need to have peace in our lives. And the Bible declares to us in many different places that we have indeed received the peace that God gives through Jesus. So let's start first in talking about the new believer. Now we've walked a number of steps down the Romans road with people that we know and love. We've been talking about that, how to lead somebody to Christ following this blueprint that the Lord's given us. We've convinced them that they need Jesus. We've shown them what the scriptures say about their lives and their need for Jesus. And we've gotten them to the point where they're ready to, they were ready to accept Jesus. They've prayed some form of the sinner's prayer, perhaps. And now they're brand new believers in Jesus Christ. All of heaven is rejoicing, we're told, because another soul was snatched from the fires of hell and has entered into God's family. Greater news there can ever be. But they're not finished. See, they've just begun their new life in Christ. They will need guidance and encouragement to continue on in that faith. And they need protection from discouragement. Because you see, Satan just doesn't go away and say, oh well, I lost another one. No, they become targets. They need to be reassured that they are forgiven permanently. Yes, their souls are transformed by Jesus' love, but that doesn't mean all of the bad old memories suddenly go away. Old guilt and doubts can easily return and their joy be robbed from them. Thankfully, God has thought of that possibility and the next steps on the Romans road are there to build up the new believer's confidence and the assurance of acceptance by God. Let's first look today at the peace that Jesus gives. So turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 for this next step on the Romans road. Romans 5, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained the introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exult in the hope of the glory of God. Paul declares here that we have peace with God because of what Jesus has done for us and are accepting his finished work in our lives. Now, peace here has a couple different meanings. First, it means we are no longer at war with God because of our sin and rebellion. Jesus has already won the war for our souls. But, if we want victory we must first surrender. Now that seems strange to us, doesn't it? Because the person or the nation that typically surrenders in a war is not the victor, but is the vanquished, or the loser, if you will. Yet that is exactly 
what is happening when we come to Jesus. We are surrendering our will to Him. We're bowing before Him and saying, I give up. I surrender to you. And then, instead of punishing us or making us His slave, He shares with us His victory. He says, okay, if you'll surrender to me, I will make you a champion. Spiritually. So, we are at peace. The battle's over. There's no need to fight or to run or to try to hide from God any longer. And maybe some of us can remember before we accepted the Lord, that's kind of how we lived our lives. We wanted to keep God away. We hoped He didn't see the things we were doing or we tried to turn our backs on our own guilt for the sin that was in our lives. But what Paul is declaring here in this step in the Romans road is you don't have to do that anymore. All is peaceful with God. See, because of Jesus, we can stand in the presence of the holy God who is the Lord of the universe without shame or guilt or fear or dread. That's what this peace means. Imagine that. Now, we all have our concept of what heaven will be like and when we stand before God. And I don't think any of us could think that we'd just do that without our knees knocking a bit and maybe just want to fall on our faces. But what Paul is telling us here is we don't need to be afraid of that encounter. He will welcome us with open arms because there's no war going on anymore for our souls. See, we have the peace of mind that He will never condemn us, He will never reject us, and He will never ignore us. Jesus has won us this peace with God. The second notion of peace here that we have in Jesus is that we can live our lives without fear of what may come. Because we are now God's children... There's nothing that can shake us from that relationship. God is now in control of our future. We're not at the whims of the fallen world and our own sinful desires anymore. And no matter what may happen in the world, we are safe in Christ now and forever. That peace of mind in Jesus is something we can find in no one else. So it truly doesn't matter if the future is dark or the future is bright or the Lord comes back tomorrow or He's delayed for a couple hundred years or whatever it may be. In either case, we're in God's hands, secure and safe. And that gives us peace that we don't need to be afraid It also means that when we stumble and fall spiritually, yeah, we're still going to sin even though we're with, with Christ. We still make mistakes. We still fight rebellion. We still backslide, if you want to use that term, from time to time. But it means that when that happens, God is still there to pick us up, dust us off, forgive us, and help us continue down the road to heaven. His forgiveness continues in our relationship with Him. And that gives us peace. That's peace that walks beside us every day as we travel the road to heaven that comes to us through His Holy Spirit. Now these concepts of peace are very important for the young Christian to understand. Because living the Christian life, as I've said before, is impossible in our own strength. And learning to live in God's peace is a very important lesson for the young Christian. Because it goes against everything they've ever known before they came to Jesus. Everything in this world works against peace in our lives. But... Remember what Jesus told us in John 6.33. 
These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. That victory sustains and carries us through life every day. This is the peace that passes all understanding that Paul mentions in Philippians 4.7. Paul also describes this peace in a, in a sort of different or fuller way in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 19. Let's just look at that briefly. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we have both our access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Now the gist of this, or the original setting of this, is Paul was trying to help both Jews and Gentiles understand that they have an equal footing with God that Jesus has broken down the barrier between those who were God's chosen people and those who were pagans, that access is for all in Jesus. But in this, he reveals to us that Jesus is our peace. And if we just want to highlight the points he's making here, he emphasizes first, as I said, Jesus is our peace. And we have been reconciled to God through the cross. Again, he's repeated that idea. And those both far and near had peace preached to them. That means all people, those who were closer to the Lord, that they were worshiping the true God in the Jewish faith, and those who were far away from God in some dead pagan religion that kept them lost in the darkness. God is speaking to all people to come to him and receive his love. And it is because of Jesus that we have all, (coughs) excuse me, received the Holy Spirit. Now, if you remember the fruit of the Spirit, peace is one of those fruit that we are given. So, peace is God's will for our lives, is what he's saying. And he concludes this passage by saying, look, we're all God's children now, not aliens and strangers anymore. So, because we have the peace of Jesus, our past doesn't matter. We are now one in the Lord. Now let's look at the other side of this briefly. This stop on the Romans road is also vitally important for us as more mature believers as well, not just the new Christian. You see, we need periodic reminders of God's peace available to us. We need to be reminded that our sins are gone forever. And we need never fear God judging us for them in the future. That's one of Satan's tricks. Every once in a while, whisper in your ear ear, and he'll bring back some mistake you made or some rebellion that happened in your life or some horrible thing, perhaps, that you've done and try to condemn you for it, make you feel guilty for it, make you doubt whether or not the Lord has truly forgiven you. But what we're told here is very clear. No, it's all gone. We can live in that peace and never worry about our past sins ever again because of what Jesus has done. We need to be reminded from time to time that yes, we are children of God. We have surrendered our lives to Jesus and He has given us His victory. That's ongoing. It's not a once and done thing. Accepting Jesus is not, okay, I did this one day and that's the end of it. That was just the very beginning of our life in Christ. And the same promises that he made to us when we came to him at first 
are still in force for our lives every single day. I think we need to reconnect with God's peace from time to time lest we begin living lives and making decisions that are based on fear and not hope. That's an easy pattern to slip into. And it's not God's will for our lives. His love for us hasn't changed. So we never need to be afraid. Sometimes I think we also need to reflect on God's goodness to us as we remember all that He's helped us overcome on our faith journey. Now, of course, we can't live in the past. But it is sometimes a good thing to remember all of God's past blessings, His past lessons, and His past faithfulness to give us peace to face the future. If we become anxious over something happening in our lives, maybe it's a good thing to reflect back on things He's helped us to overcome in the past. How He's always been there and walked with us through the difficulties, through the valleys. You know David in the valley of the shadow of death says He will fear no evil. And God has helped us in each of our lives through terrible circumstances of one kind or another. And if we think we're facing something difficult ahead of us, it can help us to remember back and say, yeah, God helped me through that other thing. Why would He not help me through what's ahead? And that can reshift our focus back to living lives of peace and trust. Remember, God promises never to leave us or forsake us. That comes from Deuteronomy 31.6 and is repeated in Hebrews 13.5. We can trust that He's going to be there and so we can live in peace. When we remember that promise, the peace that passes all understanding will then return to our lives. It doesn't matter the circumstances. God will give us the strength we need to get through whatever we may face. So what I'm saying is, whether we're talking about new believers or not so new believers, God has given us His peace. Let's accept it and live in it every day. Let us pray. Father, thank You for Your peace. Thank you that no matter what the tribulations of this world may bring to our lives, we can overcome them. We can trust you and know that you will be with us no matter what we may do, no matter where we may go, no matter what you have in store for us. Lord, we'd all like to live with no problems and have no concerns or burdens, but we know that this world isn't going to make it that easy for us. But help to remind us that we are overcomers because of Jesus. That His victory is ours. And we can live in that peace that passes all understanding every day no matter what we may deal with. Thank you for these amazing promises. Please help us to communicate that supernatural peace to those that we may lead to Christ so that when Satan tries to destroy their faith, they can rely on your word and the power of your Holy Spirit to drive the darkness away and live lives that are victorious. We pray the same for ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.